the percentage of uh, the population aged uh, 80 or above uh, has now reached this, uh, you know, kind of remarkable figure now that we haven't seen uh, anywhere in the world before. Um, and again, this kind of sense of panic uh, kicks in whenever we talk about population aging. Um, but the reality, of course, is that, you know, if you're Japanese and you're an older Japanese, this is pretty good news, right? That you're living longer, you're healthier, you're more active. Your health insurance has kept you uh, going. The state is behind you. So in many ways, it's actually pretty good news. Yeah, indeed. In many ways it is. But the problem is there's not only more people over 80, there are more people over 65, which then really puts a strain on the younger generation to keep supporting them financially. Well, it, it can be for sure. I mean, like, there's no doubt that uh, an ageing population brings uh, challenges with it, particularly if you've got pension systems, healthcare systems, uh, social uh, social care systems which require tax being paid in um, and in order to pay for services and, and uh, pensions and income protection to be paid out at older ages as well. Um, but, and yes, it is, a, it is a challenge. There's no two ways about that. However, uh, on the flip side, we can say that um, you know some of these things can be changed, right? That, that systems can become more it can be more efficient, um, um, productivity can increase. Um, younger people and older people, of course, are more highly educated, are healthier um, than ever before. So there's still a lot of kind of levers uh, levers to pull um, when it comes to dealing with this challenge. And you know, it's like all of these grand challenges that we face at the moment. You know, yes, it's difficult, but what are you going to do? You can't just kind of you know lie flat and say, well, there's nothing we can do about it. There's actually plenty of things that we can do to manage this inevitable um, next stage of uh, the demographic transition. Yeah, and uh, Japan may be the first to hit it, but it's not only them facing this challenge, it's happening in Europe, it's happening right here in Australia. What sort of budgetary constraints or allowances is the Japanese government making for this? Well, see, that's a bit of the that's a the slight tricky issue with uh, Japan. In in some ways, they're very well placed um, uh, to deal with this because they are at the cutting edge of geron technology. For example, they have very uh, they are really excellent healthcare system and health insurance system, diet, um, exercise, active aging, healthy aging. These are all big uh, issues uh, in Japan, which is precisely why it's in this situation. Uh, in the first place. Um, on the other hand, of course, as you well know, Japan's public finances are not as brilliant as many other parts of the world. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the state of uh, of, uh, of public spending um, and uh, you know those uh, those kind of macroeconomic challenges which Japan has been going through for many years now it obviously presents a kind of drag on how it's going to uh, deal with this. And of course. When those figures came out um, about having the largest percentage of people aged over 80, of course, that is related back to having a low fertility rate for very many years now. Um, so it's not just that people are living longer, but obviously that percentage of older people is increasing uh, very rapidly. And we're not probably going to see a massive change in that uh, direction anytime soon. Yeah, no, any effort by the government to change that really hasn't been working. Um, Stuart, are we seeing a shift in people leaving rural communities and moving to the cities? So that creates a problem back in those little rural towns where people are left. Yeah, you see, and that's where actually it becomes much more, I think, much more interesting and much more pressing. That we, Instead of thinking of population ageing, or the number of people aged over 80 or aged over 65 as one big kind of amorphous issue. We have to do exactly that and drill down to the local level. So we are seeing across rural Japan, but also across rural, uh, many parts of rural uh, Asia, but then also rural Europe, this combination of rapid popula population aging with population decline in these rural areas. So therefore it becomes much harder to provide public services and infrastructure when you have this uh, much smaller, older population and often more vulnerable population scattered around uh, rural areas. Whereas, and this is the kind of unusual thing in Japan, of course, is that you see 
uh, you know, we Japan's the, the total population is is in decline. We can see these tremendous areas of population decline in the rural areas, but the big cities are growing. The big cities, the big conurbations between, you know, everywhere between, uh, you know, Tokyo and Osaka, they're still rapidly growing. It's very difficult to find housing in these cases, but more difficult than ever to find housing. So it's this real uh, split dynamic, which we're seeing in many, many parts of the world now. Yeah. And are people happier to work longer than they have in the past to sort of manage this issue going forward? Well, there again, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's always that challenge of of the nature of work, right? And and how mu how many more years you want to be working, uh, doing the particular job that you want to do. In many parts of the world, university professors like me are fighting to work forever, right? Fighting for work to, to work for years and years and years. Whereas uh, you know, my late father, uh, who was a butcher, he couldn't wait to be finished. He couldn't wait to retire, right? So, you know, uh, uh, it's very difficult to make these sweeping statements. About the nature of work, I think what we could, what we should be seeing, and what we should be pressing for, is that there should be more flexibility in working uh, in in later life. Right, that the olden days of you know you did the one job till your 65th birthday, and then you stopped and did nothing for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Those days are changing. Those days are nearly gone. And how can we re, uh, react to that in a better way by saying that it's not just about working? for longer, working until you die. It shouldn't be that at all. We should be able to change your job, to change the nature of work, to change your interaction in the labour market in such a way that it is actually beneficial for everybody. Because working in older ages can be beneficial. It can, we, it, in Japan, we know there's a huge problem with loneliness in older age, for example. Being active in the labour market or even in the voluntary sector is a hugely important um, components of mental health and of reducing loneliness, for example. Yes, indeed. So fascinating challenges ahead. Great to talk as always, Stuart. Thanks. Thanks a lot, man.